say it again. <laughs> Jay, make, it a make, a, make a simple brush. And in order to make a brush, you got to start somewhere. So let me get let me get my screen straightened out here. I'm going to start with the simplest of brushes, just a little straight line. And we're going to use a hard round. And we're gonna we're just gonna make a brush, just just a simple brush. And I'm painting with black over here. Here's my brush. And I'm I'm just doing this. Okay, and then in order to make a brush, I'll go to my marquee tool, the letter M. Go up here and do that, go over to edit, define brush preset, and there it is right there. I'm going to delete my marquee tool, and there's my brush. I can stamp it all day long. That's how you make a brush. You can also make a brush out of an image. Uh, Bruce mentioned a while ago that they were doing uh, uh, the moon. You can go down and make a selection of, uh, let's see if I can do it on this car. Let's make a selection right here, the marquee tool. Let's see if they'll do it on this lock layer, I don't know. Yeah. Define brush preset. There it is. Okay, let me go up here on this layer. There's nothing up here. And we got a release set. Let's see what we got. What color are we painting? There it is. That's now a brush, that thing I just got off of the car. So you can make a brush out of virtually anything. You can you can actually select clouds in an image and uh, put your marquee tool around them and use and make a brush and use those brushes as a cloud. Um, some other some other things with brushes, let's see. If you're using, I showed you how to rotate the brush. Uh, Paul probably knows this because he paints a lot. If you're using a Wacom pad, you can rotate your, your photo while you're painting. It's a regular old brush. If you're doing this and, and you don't want to go in that angle, you just, just turn the paper. It's easier than trying to move your hand sometimes. And I'm just doing this with the wheel on my Wacom pad. Paul, you probably do this all the time, don't you? Yeah, but you can also use the letter R. Yeah, but that's, I got my finger, one finger is on the, is on the ring on it, Wacom pad, and one is on the, is on the brush and I just yeah but oh, if, if you don't have a Wacom tablet if you don't yeah you have to use the letter R you're right okay let's see. and then to get it back to where you start out just hit escape yeah I just hit the uh hit the escape right and it'll take you back level um let's see what else I want to show you I showed you a copy an image um backgrounds I was I think I got on this because I was showing Ann how I did this. This is a brush I made a couple years ago uh, because I, before I learned how to paint backgrounds right from uh, from uh, Sandra Pierce. Uh, th this is a brush that, that's available. I made I call it background creator brush. It's a brush that's available in your uh, legacy palette on your brush panel, but you just have to give it certain characteristics. And here's what I did with it. I've, I've picked colors that I wanted to use, and I'm using uh, a jitter from the background to the foreground, and I'm using rotate, and I'm using scatter. And when I paint with this brush, here's what it does. It's almost mesmerizing. It's as easy as it is. I mean, it's just. And then. Uh, and you do you accomplish that by going in here and giving the brush 
characteristics. Um, the brush tip shape, it, it's a it's a 150, the brush is called a 150 uh, soft something. It's, it's your legacy palette. <clears throat> and you give it shape dynamics. I've got angle jitter, which means it's gonna rotate in different angles while you're painting. I'm scattering it, which means it's gonna move about like that. Uh, and the color dynamics, it's, I'm using the background and the foreground colors and I'm having them jitter 100%. <clears throat> if I want to introduce another uh, uh, little characteristic is I can jack up the hue jitter, which means not only is it going to go back to the foreground, but it's also going to change the hue. Uh, let's see if I can fill this with white a minute. Get rid of this stuff. Okay. You can see the hue there a little bit. Let me change it, make it even more dramatic. Hue jitter, come on. Okay, now you can see you can see magenta and, and other colors being introduced into it. But that's one way you can do a quickie paint of a of a crazy background. See if I can find another brush. I've done that too here. Um, I don't know what this one's going to do. Let's find out. It's a little different brush, different color. But these are time savers if you're trying to paint something in a hurry. <clears throat> you can also go in with your brushes and give them a and put a texture, involve a texture. And when you change the texture uh, by by using one of these blend modes, you can look down and in, in down here in this area, and you'll see the effect it's going to have on the brush. Some of them are not not very visible. Some of them are more visible. Linear burn. Some of them you can't even see. Linear height and height don't look to be much different, uh, but I think it it uh, defaults to height, and that's what it does. Uh -huh. And there's just, uh, there's no end to what you can make with your brushes. Here's another one. I don't know what this is going to do. It's like a cloud. You can change the colors. Let's change colors. Let's go uh, here. And uh, let's do this color here. Okay. And boom, you're painting the background in. And then if you want to take it another level, you can do what Sandra Pierce did. She was, uh, I think, I think we got this from the, um, from her imaging class. Or maybe it was from the class she did at Maryland. She had her, let me go to my mixer brushes. This is her uh, Pete's brush. Remember she had Pete's brush, Pete's mixer. Talking about Pete Rezac. And you can use that mixer brush in here to paint this and it makes it look a little bit more organic than what, than what I had. And it's a great background. So then if you want to um, do a, uh, Add some complementary colors, uh, and I'm not going to try to do the math. You can, you can. All you have to do is bring your compute, bring your thing up, put in uh, 267 minus 180, and 87 is a complementary color of 267. So I change this to 87, and I can put get the brush back. And just put a little dab, just put a little dab of that in there. And then mix it up with a mixer brush. And there's a complementary color in. So there's some brush tip tricks for you. That's nice, Jay. Thank you. Yep. I like it. Make any kind of brush you want. If you just take the time to draw it, or like you say, uh, uh, like Bruce said, they got the moon. If you, if you've got a picture of the moon, all you got to do is uh, 
is select it with, with a marquee tool and uh, define a brush, brush preset and you've got your own. So if people say you're, uh, you're, not, you're not copying someone else's image, you're actually using your own. You can use your own for everything. Just want to take, uh, take the time to do it. But uh, brushes, and I just, I'm not even scratching the surface on brushes with what there is to know. I, I think I know a little bit about it. But there's, so much, there's so much more that I don't know about brushes that it scares me. There's so many more things. Oh, and there is one more thing I did want to show you. A lot of people aren't familiar with this. Let's get back on brushes a minute. I didn't show you my favorite. I made my favorite brush. I got to show you that of all times. So let's wait. Okay. Made my Ann Looney brush. She stepped away from the computer. This is my Ann Looney brush. I just took the Wacom pad and wrote Ann Looney in my crummy handwriting and uh, made a brush preset out of it. And that's how I make, that's how I stamp my, uh, get a shot of this on my images. I just wrote it in my Wacom pad to find a brush preset. Now I can just stamp, uh, stamp it on here. I can tell Bruce is jealous. So I made a Bruce press jet, uh, brush too. <laughs> and Lenny, look at your brush I made. That looks just like my logo. I love it. <clears throat> that could be my new logo signature. <laughs> Send it my way. Yeah. <laughs> well, all you have to do is, um, and I, I, I don't, I don't mind sharing it with you, but uh, if you go into these, uh, how would you say it? Calligraphic brushes? Is that what it would be called? That sounds yeah. right. Calligraphy. Cal it's calligraphy, but is it a is it a calligraphic brush? That I don't know. Okay, it's let's try. Let's try this right here. This is this is how you can make your brush. Um, let's see. I'm down at the bottom. I can't write down there. So let's wait again. You have to have fun. And these, I think these brushes are all in your, I'm not sure whether that's in your um, legacy palette or not. This is what I did. Now it's not real smooth. So what you can do is if you go into your, your characteristics, make sure smoothing is on and move your smoothing slider over to about 30, 30 or so. And then you'll find when you write, you're, you're writing a lot smoother. Ah. Like that. Mm -hmm. You have to have smoothing on here and your characteristic brush settings. Mm -hmm. You have to have smoothing check. Then that enables this, this uh, box up here to, to work. And 35 seems to be a good one. Thank you, Jack. Okay. So have fun with it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't like to send checks anymore. Never stop playing. <laughs> good advice. Very good advice. I'm going to stop the recording now.